and we thought of this talk today spe uh, specifically because today is March 14. And uh, March 14th, as some of you may be know, uh, may be uh, aware of by now, we celebrated worldwide as Pi Day. And when we talk about Pi, we are specifically referring to the mathematical constant Pi, which is defined as the ratio of uh, circle circumference to the diameter. So this is the uh, like a proper definition of the value of uh, Pi. Now, of course, uh, 2 pi is 360 degrees. Half of that is pi. So that is that is how uh, you know we also uh, understand pi. Uh, you know when we look at it in terms of radians of a circle. So this is the definition of uh, pi. And how did this uh, celebration of pi day come about? So pi day was you know initially uh, organized in 1988. Uh, almost like uh, 40 years, 40, 45 years almost. So it was first organized by Larry Shaw at the San Francisco uh, Exploratorium. And one of their ways of celebrating uh, Pi Day back then was to bake pies, as you see in this picture. So you might, uh, you know, what is the relationship between a mathematical quantity Pi and uh, baking a pie? So it might uh, nothing serious going on here. It might be as simple as uh, the play on the way the words, the two words sound. Both have the same uh, kind of pronunciation, pi. But you can also say a, a pi is normally a circle, and uh, you know it's a nice representation of the value of pi. So you can take it any way you want, but this is how it was celebrated. And since then, every year when people organize Pi Day, there is a custom to bake pies. Either it's a banana pie or apple pie or some other fruit pie. And as a result, you know, people in the Raspberry Pi community, as you know, Raspberry Pi is an embedded device. It's a single compu uh, board computer which was invented uh, to, to make uh, computing and computing knowledge accessible to beginners. So that was how uh, Raspberry Pi was invented. And uh, people from the Raspberry Pi community also started celebrating Pi Day. So that is how today Pi Day is talked about uh, not only with respect to the value of uh, Pi and everything related to Pi, but also related to baking and eating of pies and then programming for the Raspberry Pi. Incidentally, Einstein's birthday also falls on this day. Right, so that's another piece of information. March 14th is Einstein's birthday. Something interesting happened in 2015, which is uh, which was celebrated as Super Pi Day. So what is the uh, reason for this? So if you look at the expansion of Pi, it is 3.14, which is where you know Pi Day comes about because it's 14th of March. But then if you look at the next few digits. The next two digits is 15. So 2015 was celebrated by the world uh, as Super Pi Day because with this representation 3, 14, 15, we get the first five digits of the constant Pi. And if you take it further at exactly 926, 53 seconds, we get the we obtained the first 10 digits of Pi. Now, when is the next time when we will get a super pi day? It won't happen until uh, 2115. Of course, most of us will not be around. So we just missed it. The super pi day was celebrated on uh, 2015. So this is uh, uh, a brief introduction to pi and pi day. And if you look at the first 100 decimal digits of pi, it is given here. Uh, and we will talk a little bit more about this uh, later in the session. Some quick facts about Pi, uh, nothing new. I, I suppose most of us will be aware of these things. First of all, Pi is an irrational number. What does it mean, irrational number? It means that Pi cannot be written as A divided by B, given that A and B are integers. 
So you cannot have a, a fractional representation of the value of pi. So that is why we call it as an irrational number. And uh, there, is, there are no discernible patterns in its sequence of digits. So that is also one of the kind of, uh, you can say, characteristics of a, uh, I mean, if you find a sequence, you, they, uh, you can say that uh, it's a rational number. For example, one divided by three, that's a rational number. And there is a pattern, it is 0 0.333, so three uh, repeats to infinity. So you have a pattern there. Uh, what about the value of pi? Who, who are the first people to have calculated the value of pi to uh, a good amount of precision? So it was uh, long known, even in the ancient times of Babylonians and Egyptians, that pi was somewhere in excess of the value of three. But uh, how close was was it to the today's actual value of three? So the best ancient approximation was from Archimedes, who placed the value of pi between these two numbers, three ten of uh, seventy one and three one of seven. Now this number most of us would have learnt in high school, or even in primary school, I suppose. This is if you look represent it in uh, a, a divided by b. This is what you get 22 by 7. So most of us used to remember uh, pi with this kind of a fraction 22 by 7. But this approximation of pi actually comes from Archimedes. Who uh, uh, you know had a unique way of deriving this particular limit. So we will see how we did it. When was the first time uh, you know the symbol which is a Greek symbol? When was it that? people started using this as the value of pi. So this was first done by William Jones in 1706. So before that, people might have used, uh, you know, just an expression, a word pi, pi or something equivalent to that. But uh, the actual use of the Greek symbol started in 1706, but it didn't become popular for another 30 years. It was made popular by uh, Swiss mathematician, Euler. So he is the one who made it popular. Now uh, it's very uh, common for people even today to look at pi uh, as many digits as possible. So by the start of the 20th century, uh, about 500 digits of pi were known back then. Now this is again not a trivial feat because you know at that time there were no computers. We are talking about uh, let's say 1901. Uh, we didn't have any digital computers back then, and uh, so for that time, you know, 500 digits of pi uh, is quite an achievement. Today, not today, in 2002, about 100 years after this feat. We, at the University of Tokyo, they calculated over a trillion digits of pi. Today in 2022, I'm sure, uh, I don't know the exact number, uh, but, but I'm sure we have uh, many trillion digits of uh, pi uh, that people have calculated. So this is nothing more than a curiosity. Uh, we, practically speaking, nobody needs a trillion digits of pi. And in fact, e even in the high precision uh, world of engineering, you don't need more than probably 10 digits of pi. So in practical situations, we don't need such high precision, but this is really a curiosity. Then in 2010, Google Doodle celebrated Pi Day with this doodle. So this doodle has all the important elements surrounding pi. The area of a circle, pi r square, circumference of a circle, 2 pi r, then you have volume, four third pi r cube. So in all these things, pi is featured. And this is the derivation of Archimedes. We just saw the limits which Archimedes figured out. These limits are represented in this doodle. 22 by seven is the upper limit. 223 by 71 is the lower limit. And uh, volume of a cylinder, so pi r square by h. So that is also there. And we, I mentioned earlier, you know, the angle of a circle in radians is uh, 2 pi, 360 degrees is the degree figure, 2 pi. But if you expand this into a sine curve, one full circle of a sine wave is 2 pi. 
you can see that as well here. So this is a nice doodle. Uh, all the main concepts surrounding circles and uh, you know periodicity, they are all covered here. So this is a brief introduction to Pi. Any questions at this point? Or anything you want you want to share from your knowledge of Pi? So Arvind, I have a question. Yeah. So Vinit, you know that uh, you say yeah yeah hey, Vinit here. So you know that uh, you have to. Uh, can, can you go to that screen, please? Yeah. The, By the, the way, Google I'm not Google, an right? expert uh, because I'm. Uh, I have learned only from my <laughs> no, engineering no, I... perspective. Yeah. <laughs> No, that, that Google do Doodle, right, had this very interesting yeah. in inequality. It says that 223 by 71 is less than pi, which is less than 22 by 7, right? But yeah. some reason, 22 by 7 seems to have become the, like, that's what my daughter is learning now, for instance, right? Okay. So, but okay. It, it turns out that this is an inequality here. I didn't know that. Yeah. But between this, somehow, 22 by 7 has become the, uh, the let's say, the commonly used number, right? Do, do you yeah, know any yeah. reason why that happened? My guess is because this is easier to remember 22 by 7. Especially when you are teaching school kids. Because uh, in engineering, we never encountered 22 by 7. But because by that time, we had already gotten used to the fact that it was 3.1415 something. And engineering calculators always have this constant handy. But in yeah. high school level, where we are not uh, allowed to use uh, calculators and you need a number to remember easily, this is what we are taught 22 by 7. Right. So I feel that it is simply an easy way to remember. But if you look at it, I will show you the actual decimal values later. Uh, yeah. Actually, pi is closer to this limit than this limit. <laughs> That's what I was the just looking at. It's closer to 223 by 71. Uh, I'm trying so, to just watch that out as we talk. 223 by 71 is uh, somewhere near 3.1405 or something like that. So the actual one is 1 here. As you can see here, this yeah. is the actual one. This is the lower limit, 14085. The actual value is 14159. And this one is uh, 14286. So, uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter for high school students. The easy way to remember is 22 by 7. But uh, if you want high right. precision, uh, uh, we will actually use the, what uh, we know today, the actual value of 5. So that is what we would use. We would not use 22 by 7. But we are talking about Archimedes, and I will. Uh, so that that is actually the next section. Any other comments? If not, we'll go to the next section. Uh, so uh, the, the basic way of calculating pi is very simple. You know, we know that pi is related to the circle, so we start with an approximation of the circle. We take a hexagon, nothing more than a six-sided polygon. It's a regular polygon. And now this polygon is inside the circle. So now if you take the perimeter of the polygon, we expect it to be less than the perimeter of the circle because it's inside the circle. Likewise, you take a polygon which is outside the circle. Now this polygon is having a greater perimeter compared to the circle. So now you have two polygons. One is inside the circle, one is outside the circle. And you calculate the perimeter of these two polygons and you know that the uh, perimeter of the circle or circumference of the circle is somewhere between these two limits. That is how you get the limits which Archimedes uh, followed, uh, obtained. This is how you get these limits. So the actual method is called the method of exhaustion. But he did not use a six sided polygon because this will give you, uh, this will obviously have a big error. So the way to do it is increase the number of sides. As you increase the number of sides, the error term de decreases and you get closer and closer to the actual circle. So this is a 12 sided polygon. What Archimedes did is to use a 96 sided polygon, regular polygon. 
and by doing this he obtained this particular these limits that we have already talked spoken about now why did he use 96 why not use 100 why not use uh, 200 right so it it so turn it turns out that it's easier to calculate uh, the angles and the perimeters if for example your side n is of this form 3 into 2 to the power of k where k is greater than equal to 1 so for a hexagon k is 1 so this is the so when your uh, number of sides of the polygon is of this form then it becomes easier for you to calculate the perimeter based on the angles uh, of these uh, triangles in, inside so that is the reasoning why uh, archimedes used 96 uh, sided polygon now you may think that you know today it is really easy for us to calculate these things but in archimedes archimedes in the time of archimedes remember zero had not been invented there were no decimals so the calculation is all manual and it is very involved secondly archimedes used only geometry because advanced trigonometry and algebra were not developed by them so obviously greeks knew trigonometry but their trigonometry was not in the form that we are used to today their trigonometry is used using what is known as chord calculations so what is a chord suppose you join two points in a circle that is the chord that line is the chord so everything that the greeks did was based on calculation of chords so a diameter is the maximum chord inside a circle so the trigonometry in the time of ancient greeks was based on how you calculate the length of chords within a circle it was not based on sin theta or cos theta or tan theta the way we do it today so the mathematics of uh, you know ancient greeks we are talking about 250 bc was very different so given this you know uh, manual calculation of 20 side uh, involving uh, 96 sided polygon is not a trivial thing basically what archimedes would have done would have been some, something similar to this f of x which is a square root of 2 minus 2 times root of 1 minus x square by 4 so this equation comes in the context of a 12 sided polygon now you plug this x is equal to 1 you calculate f of 1 and next you do another iteration f of f of 1 this is for a 24 sided polygon then you repeat that for a 48 sided polygon then a 96 sided polygon so this is how you do it and then uh, you will get the value of pi so to show this we have a small python program because we wanted to combine a little bit of code with the math in today's session so the formula itself is very simple f of x this is the formula nothing uh, magical here so square root 2 minus 2 times square root 1 minus x square by 4 and then you run it in a loop uh, i is equal to yeah so what we are doing we are calculating for the different sizes six sided polygon 12 sided 24 48 96 so you can see even for a six sided polygon it is 3.1 it's not bad right but then if you want uh, to go up to the second decimal accuracy you need a 46 sided polygon and then uh, when you do a 96 sided polygon this is the number you get 3.14145 so uh, now this is of course uh, like here we have used this kind of formula and you can see this is also an approximation right this is kind of an approximation but if you go strictly by uh, archimedes uh, method this particular method you will actually get two values one value which is the lower bound one value which is the upper bound so that detail is not captured in this formula in this formula we are taking a single value you can uh, because maybe some approximation has been made for more information you can always uh, go to the chord calculations how it is done here and also this particular link so this is how archimedes would have done it but let's do a simple experiment uh, we, you can also work it out yourself 
if you look at the inner uh, perimeter again i am not uh, differentiating between outer perimeter and inner perimeter because those two will become uh, the same when you take n to infinity so i am just looking at inner perimeter and uh, let's say uh, this is the side of a polygon this is the height so yeah, inner perimeter is n times b uh, n is the number of sides b is the length of the side and you can show that if r is the radius of the circle you can show it is 2r sin pi by n where r is the outer radius so we are looking at a polygon which is inside the circle now as x tends to infinity what happens right uh, so you will get this equation pi is equal to n times sin pi by n now how does this make sense uh, it doesn't make sense uh, if you look at it individual figures so if x is uh, actually n this should be n uh, so if n tends to infinity obviously this is infinity but pi by n uh, becomes close to zero so what you are effectively doing is multiplying infinity by by zero so you can't evaluate this uh, in the current form but we can always write a program to see whether this holds good and that is what we have done here all we are doing is calculating n times sin pi by n and we see that as you increase n it approaches pi but of course archimedes would have never done this firstly we are calculating pi by using a known value of pi which itself is a catch 22 situation so we are doing this only to verify that you know this equation is valid equation as you increase the number of sides of the polygon this should hold good that is what we figured out from our geometry and we are verifying this with this formula so any uh, thoughts or discussions at this point so if not uh, yeah we can come back to the discussion later the another simple way to do uh, calculate the value of pi is uh, monte carlo simulation which is widely used in engineering so what we do here we take a circle of unit radius and that the circle itself is inscribed within a square now imagine you are drawing random numbers from a uniform distribution and the numbers are between plus 1 and minus 1 and you do it in two dimensions along the x axis and the y axis so the important thing is uh, you are taking the num uh, numbers from a uniform distribution so now some of the numbers will lie outside the circle so many of the numbers will be inside the circle and if you take the ratio of the total number of uh, points uh, random numbers drawn from your distribution and then you compute how many numbers are inside the circle you will get a ratio and that ratio is the ratio of the circle to the square and that is exactly what this program does and you will get the value of pi so we are drawing a million samples and by the time we hit uh, like 10 million we are having a fairly accurate estimate of the value of pi okay so the actual value of pi is uh, 1415 so this is accurate you can say to the third decimal but not beyond that so monte carlo simulation is a good way but it converges to get the actual value of pi it's going to take a very long time and one of the problems of that is your distribution may not really be uh, a uniform distribution because uh, it is relying on this particular seed and then where is this we are relying on this particular software function which may not be truly random so there is a limit to how much you can accuracy you can get from at least this particular program not that uh, you know it's a limit software uh, limitation if you write a different random uh, generating function which is truly random then probably and you do all your arithmetic with the right precision then you will be able to achieve you know a precision which is close to the actual value 
So I don't know I, whether some of you have used this. You might have used Monte Carlo in some other context. Yeah, Arvind, so Vineet here again, right? I think yeah. we do use Monte Carlo a lot uh, for many things. And yeah, like you rightly pointed out, right? The accuracy of this function will also limit you, the random dot random. That, yeah, uh, well, the distribution of it, right? So, yeah. But very interesting anyway, mathematically, yes. So. Another way to calculate uh, pi is from mathematics. These are... Uh, uh, like uh, uh, during the 14th century and beyond. So the earliest uh, use of infinite series uh, is supposed to be by Indian mathematicians around 14th century. And then years later, maybe two or three centuries later, they were independently rediscovered by the European mathematicians. So one of the basic things is this one, this equation, which was uh, known to the Indian Indians back in the 14th century. So pi by 4 is equal to 1 minus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 5 minus 1 by 7 and so on. So this is a special case of what is known as a Taylor series, which was like discovered or defined in the 18th century, like three centuries later by Brooke Taylor. So Taylor series uh, has a different form, but I am showing the expansion of uh, tan inverse of x for x uh, less than or equal to 1. So now in this particular expansion of uh, arc 10, this is what you have. So this is the general form. Now in this form, if you substitute x is equal to 1, you will get this equation. And uh, so 1 minus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 5 and so on. And uh, we know that tan pi by 4 is equal to 1. So tan inverse of x is pi by 4. So these two are equivalent if you substitute x is equal to 1. So we can verify this if you want. And uh, this is what we get. So this entire formula that you have here coming from Taylor series. Is it this one? Yeah. So this we have implemented here as a simple for loop. And we are taking first four terms, 10 terms, 100 terms, and 1000 terms. So if we take only the first four terms, you can see that the approximation of pi is not that accurate. Then you go further, you take uh, the first 10 terms, then it comes to 3.0. First 100 terms, 3.13, 3.14 and so forth. So convergence is again not that fast, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's probably, yeah, so uh, so this is what we have, but there are other formulas that today people have discovered which converges faster. Another uh, formula actually uh, due to Ramanujan, there are not just these two that I am showing here. There are many formulas that converge to pi or forms of pi. So I'm just showing you two forms. Uh, so this is uh, using factorial, which can also be written in terms of gamma function. And this evaluates to 2 divided by pi. The other formula, which is also due to Ramanujam, is this one. 1 divided by pi is this expression. And this we can compute easily. So, so I have written a simple code. This is, of course, combination 2n choose uh, n. So that we can do it in Python using the SciPy library. So in SciPy under special module, we have a number of useful functions. One of them is the, uh, this one, number of combinations. So we are making use of this, plugging it into this formula. And then we are con considering only the first 10 terms. Okay, And we get such an amazing approximation of pi. Remember our previous example from the 12, 14th century and from the 18th century? After 1000 terms, we achieved only so much. But with Ramanujan's formula here, with just 10 terms, we are achieving much greater precision. So we can also try what happens with four terms. Can everyone hear me? 
yeah i hear yes, you sir. Well, yes sir yes sir there is a temporary power cut in my location so if i lose connection just hold on sure yeah okay if you can hear me that's good yes we can hear you okay so this is one of the amazing formulas uh, due to ramanujan and uh, so what did we do uh, we did i wanted to do first four terms so even at four terms we get such an amazing approximation 141592 i think it's valid right so if you look at the 141592 yeah so it is accurate to six decimal places so let's say if you take only the first term i don't think much will happen yeah so if you take only the first term it is 3.2 if you take first two terms so already we get approximation to uh, two decimals and so on two or three decimals so this is a good formula and it's a well known formula but there are so many other formulas for calculating the value of pi today another famous formula is this uh, discovered by simon lof i don't know how to pronounce this in 1995 it's called the bbp formula and it's named after the three inventors and it's a uh, it looks uh, fairly complex but there are many other uses uh, of this formula besides calculating the value of pi so this is uh, the actual formula now i try to implement this here and uh, this is what i got 1 2 4 8 so i am considering uh, so many terms so if you go up to 16 terms so you can see we get a fairly good approximation of uh, to the actual value of pi so this is the bbp formula and uh, one of the uses of this formula is what if you wish to extract the nth digit of pi that means let's say i want the 10th digit in the decimal uh, decimal digit of pi but without requiring me to calculate the previous n minus 1 digits can i do it so this is a formula which enables you to do that right and uh, the formula itself is quite complex and i try to implement this but i did not get the answer so i have implemented it i have checked it but when i actually execute this i get the wrong answer so the most probable uh, cause of this is the precision because python is not designed for this sort of work but despite that i have not used uh, the standard floating point operations provided by default python so python has a module called decimal which allows you to control the level of precision so in fact in this uh, implementation i am using the decimal and i am increasing the precision to 100 but despite doing all this i am still not getting the correct uh, value of pi uh, for a specific uh, decimal place so anyway the code is available uh, some of you can uh, tinker with this later on and if you figure out the answer uh, how to do it do let me know so we can have a discussion on this so this is uh, you know the importance of the bbp formula and don't think that this is all like uh, discovered one century back or you know 20 years ago and nothing more is there to be discovered this the paper related to this was published only in january 2020 by the same author who published the original paper in 1995 who discovered this original formula in 1995 so same author has just published a paper in january that is just two months back he has published a paper so those of you who are interested who are interested in this topic can study this paper okay the last uh, so when it comes to infinite series one more thing i want to share this is the famous problem called the basel problem some of you might have heard of this problem in mathematics so in uh, sometime in the mid 17th century this problem was posed to mathematicians 
what is the value of this infinite series? One by one square, one by two square, one by three square, and so on to infinity. People knew that this will converge, but to what value will it converge? Nobody could figure it out. And for uh, nearly 100 years, this problem was not solved. And finally, it was uh, solved by Euler in 1734. And then uh, after a few years in 1741, he gave a rigorous proof of the solution. And uh, this equation alone, I mean, Euler has so many uh, mathematical achievements to his credit. But coming with a closed form of this infinite series uh, made him so famous all, all across Europe. So this is uh, called the Basel problem. And uh, it will be interesting to know that this series converges to pi square divided by 6. So there are a lot of inter interesting uh, infinite series that converge to pi to the power of something. Right. And uh, the proof of this is also available on Wikipedia. But I'm sure there are different proofs of this. Another interesting way to represent pi. Forget about uh, infinite series like this. You can also represent pi as an infinite continued fraction. What does it mean? Basically, pi is represented as a fraction, but then the fraction has other terms which continues to infinity. So these three equations are all equivalent. You can convert from one of these to the other. Right. So take this. Uh, so uh, take this, for example, once three plus one square divided by six plus three square. But this term has a denominator six plus pi square, and this term again has a denominator. So this is known as infinite continued fraction. So this type of a derivation was done by uh, William Bronkner in 17th century. And this is again has a general form. This, this, these are all uh, concrete examples of a more general form of tan x. Tan x can be also written as a, a infinite continued fraction in this way. X, x square and so on. So this is uh, 1, 3, 5, 7. So this is similar to what you have here in the middle. So it's a representation of tan x. Now one of the insights from this formula is, uh, see, uh, until this point, people suspected that uh, pi is an irrational number, but nobody could give proof to that. But from this example of pi being an infinite continued fraction, uh, this person, this mathematician Lambert, he gave a formal proof that uh, pi is indeed an irrational number. And this proof comes from representing pi as an infinite continued fraction. So it's also interesting, you know, this form of pi was discovered in the 17th century, but it was only uh, kind of 100 years later that somebody used this to prove that pi is an irrational number. So what it suggests to me that, you know, even in, in those days uh, when Probably, of course, it was not easy to disseminate information back then. But then, uh, you know, 100 years to give a proof when, you know, the method is actually kind of staring at your face. It's a little bit puzzling. So maybe what it suggests is that there could be a lot of proofs which are yet waiting to be discovered from already discovered facts. So I am giving an implementation of one of these examples, continued fraction. So if we execute this, we get the value of pi. So this equation here is based on uh, 2, 4. It is based on the first one here. 4 divided by 1 plus 1 square, 2 plus 3 square, and so on. So this one is implemented in the code here. So you can take a look at it later on. So uh, all this code will be available to you uh, via when we publish this video on YouTube. Any questions before we move to the next uh, bit? Analyzing Pi. So many more formulas of Pi are on Wolfram website. I'll just open this link. You can take a look. So many more formulas are given here, but basically they will fall into those categories, infinite series, 
the use of limits like this, continued fractions. This is the BBP formula. Then continued fractions is here. The use of radicals, so you can also do it using radicals. So this is the use of radicals. Then you have continued fractions. Uh, where is it? Yeah, it, it's there somewhere here. Yeah. So these are. So this is a useful page uh, for you to study. So moving on, analyzing pi. Some trivial things. Uh, some trivia about pi. You know, uh, I mentioned earlier that there are no discernible patterns, but once in a while we come across something interesting in in the expansion of pi. So the sequence 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This exact sequence appears for the first time at this particular position. That is 17.3 billion to position of the expansion of pi. Until then, we don't find the sequence. Interesting. At position number 60, we find all the nine digits, zero to nine, but they are in a scrambled order, not like this. They are in a scrambled order. Then something interesting happens at position 768. We find this particular sequence, nine, 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 six times. So this is called as the Feynman point, named after the physicist Feynman, Richard Feynman. So again, we have to be careful. Somebody might uh, be too enthusiastic and say that, you know, from this point onwards, it is going to be all nines, but that is not the case. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, do we find 9876543210 anywhere? The re reverse, I don't know. Uh, I have not analyzed. Uh, so. But uh, to analyze this, we need first billions of digits of pi. So these tri these are trivia which are published by other people on their blogs and websites. So to answer your specific question, we can do an analysis on our own, provided that uh, we get hold of billions of digits, billions of digits of pi. Then we can do this analysis ourselves. So it's yeah, we don't need to partial answer. Yeah, hold. We don't need to hold them. It's just that we need to keep uh, scanning for ten digits, starting from. No, no, got uh, it. Yeah, yeah, I got it. But first, we have to get hold of the program to generate. So I am not uh, from this background. So uh, that will be an interesting exercise to write a program to calculate the value of pi to any given length. So without losing precision, so that, that will be an interesting example. It is not trivial that that much I can tell you. Yeah. Any other questions? So in uh, 2003, uh, this uh, person in Canada, he analyzed, he looked at the first trillion digits of pi. And then he analyzed their distribution, like uh, how many occurrences of zeros, how many occurrences of nine and so forth. And this is what he found in the first trillion digits. And then he, he plotted the graph, which we have also done here. And this is what we find. So it's almost equally distributed across all the nine digits. What it says, uh, you know, the expansion of pi it's not, is not partial to any particular digit. And also the fact that we are not able to make out, uh, you know, sequences like recurring sequences and stuff like that. It is as good as being random, right? So that is the kind of insight, but we can also do it here. So what we have done, what I have done is Princeton uh, has shared in this particular link, the first 10 million digits of pi. So what I've done is I've downloaded this and then I have. Uh, it's basically a text file containing the 10 million digits and it's not a big file, right? It's going to be only 10 MB. So then we ingest this file, um, convert it to a Python tuple and then we plot the histogram 
and the histogram shows more or less the same results. So all the digits are almost equally distributed. We do a further analysis on the digits because now we have the individual digits. So the next bit of analysis is we convert it to a pandas data frame and then we take a first order difference. What does it mean first order difference? It means that we take the difference between two adjacent digits. And after doing that, if you look at the value counts, now we find that something like this occurs. It is no longer equally distributed. What, what are we actually comparing now? We are comparing the differences between two adjacent digits. And when we plot this, we get a triangular distribution. So this is interesting, right? If you take the difference of two adjacent digits, we get a triangular distribution. So what is the uh, insight here uh, from this triangular distribution? So we have to go back to mathematics. It so happens that a triangular distribution comes about when we take the difference between two independent uniform random variables. OK, so there's a link to Wikipedia here. So what this means is that the even digits of pi are independent from the odd digits of pi. This is the conclusion from this particular uh, analysis. So again, it's kind of interesting I, I, I found. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah it's really interesting, um, Arvind. Uh, but just a question, right? The triangular distribution can also appear by sum of two distributions, right? So why do you take only difference and why do you infer that way? So you are actually right because uh, here that is also true. If you go to the Wikipedia article, I mm. think uh, they give that also as an example. You can take uh, sum of. Yeah, because basically the two will just convolve, right? You'll get a triangle. Mm. So I have taken this as an example, but we can uh, do the reverse also. What you are saying is if you take the sum of two, yeah. you are expecting it to be a triangular distribution, correct? Yeah. So we can do that. Uh, I think uh, only thing here is that uh, in this particular case, uh, the numbers are still between uh, minus nine and nine. So let's do that. Uh, if you want to do that, we can because it's a simple code change. Oh, OK. So I have implemented as a pandas data frame diff because diff is readily available. Uh, two right. adjacent digit, I, I readily don't know how to combine these two. Mm. So we can implement it as a for loop. Uh, Anyway, this is an exercise we can try it out later. Yeah, but it's yeah, a good really amazing. So this is all I had to share. The last bit of information comes from statistics. So one of the things is uh, they should uh, if if the sequence of digits in the expansion of pi is uh, truly random like right, there should be no auto -co correlation. So there is a test to check whether a series has any autocorrelation properties. So that test is called the Durbin Watson test. And this test, especially in statistics or in machine learning, it is commonly used in regression problems. So what they do is after you have fit the regression model, you will have the residuals. So on the residuals, you can apply this test. And if you apply this test, if the value is close to two, then you can be sure that the, you know you your model has done a proper fit to the data. That means data has no autocorrelation. So I applied this test and I got a value of 2.999. So that means it is close to three. This is not a great value to show that you know the digits of pi don't show any autocorrelation properties. But uh, I uh, so actually so this. I am doubting my calculation, whether I have done the calculation correct, but you can go to this particular blog, uh, this particular uh, yeah, blog post where they have done a similar uh, calculation for pi, but they have not used uh, uh, Python. They have used a different uh, package called SAS. So in SAS, 
they apply the same test and they get a value close to two. So because of this, I am doubting my own calculations. So again, if any of you uh, figure out a way to improve this or find out where is the flaw in this, I would be happy to yeah, know that. Arvind, uh, you showed on a website where uh, there are certain number of digits. I don't know, 100 digits or 10 million digits. I don't remember. You 10 showed, million, uh, 10 million. Before. Yeah. Uh, so probably you can take that value and see if there is sort of correlation. That very come again. What is your comment? You can use that value. Yeah. Uh, for auto correlation, you said that uh, you, you uh, that want to have a done. value, that right? Exactly exact what value. This is using those values only. Oh, okay, okay. This calculation is using the first 10 million digits of pi. We need the values, otherwise we can't do this. So that means that uh, the 10 million digits are not sufficient enough. No, no, for, no. It doesn't mean uh, that. Or. Hmm. It doesn't mean that because uh, this website is using the same 10 million digits. In fact, I got the source from here only. Oh, the Python is not accurate. No, I, I suspect I'm applying it wrongly. Because I'm not from statistics background, so this is uh, to be investigated further. Yeah. Or another approach is to study the this particular implementation with the implementation of SAS. So that is an, another approach. With that also, we can figure out what is wrong. So I hope you found the session interesting. We have come to the end of the session. Any questions, please ask. Or anything you want to share? So uh, Arvind, I think the session was really interesting. Very, very amazing actually, right? So yes. One question and one comment, right? The, those proofs that those uh, statements that you showed, for example, by Ramanujan and and so on, right? It's very complicated yeah. expressions, right? So, did he prove them, or was it one of those magical moments that he just wrote this formula and people are figuring out why it, one by pi will be equal to this? How did uh, he get to this something like this, right? Yeah, I I I think some of uh, some of them are pro are proven, some are not, uh, but uh, I probably. Magical, right? it, yeah, I see this is taken from Wolfram, so they have not explained there whether it was proven or anything like that. Right. That's amazing. So the other comment is like so you this, in the uh, beginning said, right? Euler, I think. All this, it is yeah. quite amazing because you, uh, all we are doing is implementing in software, which is very simple, but how to get to this level of sophistication that by itself is quite amazing. Yeah. So the other comment that I had, Arvind, you mentioned in the beginning that Euler made this uh, uh, popular, right? Is it because of the fo formula that e to the j pi is equal to minus one? That what we use in. Uh, yeah, it could be. Is that yeah. why you said, right? Yeah. I mean, that is where at least engineers start using it so much, right? Let's say in our work. So what was a which formula you're talking about e to the power of no yeah e to, so like e to the power of j pi equals to minus yeah. one right yeah 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 that is one what of the Euler's formula yeah yeah i did not introduce so that here one. but uh, uh one of the his claims for fame like he really became popular or became famous because of this basel problem which i introduced right because this was like an unsolved problem for nearly 100 years. And this is what made Euler popular. So this evaluates to pi square by 6. So this, uh, so pi is prominently featured in this formula. So now, uh, of course, uh, to answer your question, it, it's worth checking out whether this expansion was derived uh, before or after that formula e to the power of i pi. Yeah, right. but it's all around the same time. I mentioned earlier that uh, pi was first uh, used in 1706, but it's only 30 years later. 
that uh, uh, use of the symbol pi became popular. So 30 years later means it's coming to around the same time, 1734. Right. So I would not be surprised that uh, the common use of the symbol, Greek symbol pi for this purpose began with this formula, with, with this vessel problem. So thanks for joining the call. Uh, any further thoughts, comments before we log off? So I was expecting Raspberry Pi also in this meeting. <laughs> No, no, Raspberry Pi is not covered here. We uh, wanted a volunteer to give a talk on Raspberry Pi, but nobody volunteered. So instead, uh, I thought that I'll give a talk on the mathematical constant instead. One thing I didn't mention here. Yeah, I didn't mention it. Uh, so there are some hardcore mathematicians who don't celebrate Pi Day. Anybody know know why why this is so? So the reason is in mathematics. So many of these mathematicians uh, they say that two pi is a more important number because in uh, day to day problem solving two pi occurs more frequently than pi. Take for example Fourier transform. The fact one of the uh, like factors there is one by two pi, and even take circle, the angle of the circle is not pi. The angle of the circle is two pi. So many hardcore mathematicians they feel that two pi is more important than pi, and uh, for the same reason they also say that the radius of a circle is more important than the diameter. Many things that we do, uh, you know, are based on the radius, not on the diameter. So as a result, if you look at. Uh, if you look at it that way, you know, they feel that 2 pi should be a more important number than pi. And so as a result, they don't celebrate pi day. They celebrate something called tau day. So 2 pi happens to have an uh, its own symbol called tau. And 2 pi, if you do the math, it is 6.28. Uh, 6 so they celebrate Tau Day on 28th of June. Uh, so there is another community there. I don't know because we have pi r square and pi r cube also. Uh, that is, so uh, that is our understanding. No, As a layman, we are doing that. I'm talking about the professional mathematicians.